Welcome to Who Died Today, America, your trusted source for honoring those who have bid us farewell. On this 24th of July, we're not just delivering news, but saluting extraordinary lives that have touched ours. Today, we acknowledge recent passings while paying special tribute to notable figures we've lost. Each left an indelible mark on our society and inspired countless others. Join us as we remember their remarkable contributions, reflect on their impact, and celebrate the legacies they've woven into the fabric of our nation. In Who Died Today, America, their stories live on. Stay with us as we pay homage to these remarkable lives and their enduring influences. Number 13. Vince Hill, the revered English traditional pop singer and songwriter, has passed away at age 89 at his home in Henley on Thames on July 21st. Hill's career was marked by numerous hit songs, including his cover of Rodgers and Hammerstein's Edelweiss, which achieved the number two spot on the UK singles chart in 1967. Born on April 16, 1934, in Holbrook's Coventry, Hill first tasted professional singing at 17 in a public house in Margate, Kent. The self-made artist juggled jobs as a baker, truck driver, and coal miner before fully committing to music. Hill's significant break came when he secured a position as the vocalist for the Band of the Royal Corps of Signals, leading to worldwide performances during his national service. Hill's impact on the music industry spanned decades with 25 studio albums and several soundtracks. He also hosted hit TV shows during the 1970s and 1980s, including They Sold a Million, Musical Time Machine, and his own chat show, Gas Street. However, Hill's influence went beyond his work in the entertainment industry. He served as a patron of the Immaculate Society, a UK charity for those affected by central vision loss, reflecting his own struggle with age-related macular degeneration since 2011. He leaves behind a vast legacy in music and television, along with numerous awards and recognitions. Hill's illustrious career in the entertainment industry and his commitment to charity work will continue to inspire and resonate for generations to come. His passing is indeed a significant loss to the world of music and philanthropy. Number 12. Ron Sexton, comedian and radio personality, known for his memorable characters on The Bob and Tom Show, died at the age of 52 on July 21st while on his stand-up comedy tour in Ohio. The news of his death was confirmed by his family and colleagues on July 22nd, with fans and fellow comedians expressing their condolences and sharing their fond memories of Sexton. Sexton's diverse comedic talents brought laughter to millions over the years. He was best known for his character Donnie Baker on The Bob and Tom Show, but also lent his voice to other unforgettable characters such as Kenny Tarmac and Floyd the Trucker. His knack for celebrity impersonations further showcased his versatile talent. Sexton's career on The Bob and Tom Show spanned over two decades, during which time he became a much-loved figure in the world of radio comedy. The show's co-host, Tom Griswold, described Sexton as a much-loved colleague and friend whose contributions to the show made many people happy. Fans have been paying tribute to Sexton online, with many expressing their sadness and shock at the news of his passing. Fellow comedians, including Theo Vaughn and Chelsea Lynn, have also shared their condolences, describing Sexton as an absolute legend and one of the coolest dudes. As we mourn the loss of this gifted comedian, our thoughts go out to his family, his friends, and all those who found joy in his comedic talents. Number 11, Mike Ivey, a former American professional baseball player, passed away at the age of 70 in North Augusta, South Carolina, on July 21st. Known for his outstanding performance as a first baseman, Ivy had an impressive career spanning from 1971 to 1983, playing for renowned Major League Baseball teams, including the San Diego Padres, San Francisco Giants, Houston Astros, and Detroit Tigers. His skill set also extended to positions such as third baseman, left fielder, and designated hitter. 
Ivy's baseball career had an auspicious start when the San Diego Padres selected him as the first overall pick in the 1970 MLB draft, right out of Walker High School in Atlanta, Georgia, where he was recognized for his exceptional talent, hitting 21 home runs in 21 games. In his prime, Ivy was a key asset to the teams he represented. In 1978, he was traded to the San Francisco Giants, stepping into the significant role of first baseman following the retirement of the legendary Willie McCovey. He encountered setbacks due to an off-season accident and mental health challenges, but demonstrated resilience by continuing to play through the 1980 season. Off the field, Ivy was a hunting and fishing enthusiast, opening a pro shop in Snellville, Georgia, after his baseball career ended. His life reflects the journey of an athlete who demonstrated extraordinary skill, perseverance, and adaptability, making significant contributions to American baseball. Number 10, Anne Kielbuwaid, a veteran Welsh labor politician and passionate human rights advocate, died at her home in Cardiff on July 21st, aged 86. Over her illustrious political career, Sielwed served the Sinon Valley as Member of Parliament for an impressive 35 years, from 1984 to 2019, and was recognized as the first woman to sit for a Welsh Valley's constituency. Cluid's political tenure was marked by her fervent dedication to human rights, particularly women's rights. During the Iraq War, she vocally opposed Saddam Hussein's regime and later served as a special envoy on human rights in Iraq. She was also a member of the Royal Commission on the National Health Service from 1976 to 1979, and she drew attention to poor nursing care following the death of her husband, Owen Roberts, in 2012. Her contributions to human rights were recognized when she was admitted to the white robe of the Gorset of Bards at the National Eisted Fought of Wales in 1991. Cluid's tenacious spirit was highlighted by her set in protest at Tower Colliery and her stand against triggering the 2017 general election. Her tireless efforts led to impactful changes, including the successful enactment of the Female Genital Mutilation Bill in 2003. Anne Kelwide will be remembered not only for her political milestones, but also for her resilience and commitment to advocating for the rights of the marginalized. Her death is a profound loss for the political landscape as we lose a true trailblazer and advocate for human rights. Number 9. Brian O'Neill, a pivotal figure in the National Hockey League, passed away at the age of 94 on July 21st. O'Neill, who served the league for more than 50 years, held the title of Executive Vice President of Hockey Operations and is remembered for his modest grace, uncommon dignity, and meticulous attention to detail. Born in Montreal, O'Neill played hockey up to the junior B level. He graduated from Loyola College and McGill University and was a right winger on both varsity teams. After graduation, O'Neill spent nine years in publishing before joining the Financial Times of Canada. In 1966, O'Neill began his esteemed career in NHL's executive offices, starting as Director of Administration under President Clarence Campbell. He contributed significantly to the 1967 expansion draft and supervised the enlarged regular season schedule. In 1977, following Campbell's retirement, O'Neill was appointed the NHL's Executive Vice President and took charge of all player disciplinary cases. A key player in the international front, O'Neill represented the NHL in negotiations with European countries, a critical task due to the rising influx of European players to the NHL. Beyond his administrative roles, O'Neill, inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame as a builder in 1994, was a member of several NHL committees and a trustee of the Stanley Cup from 1988. After retirement, he remained connected to the league, contributing to the NHL's Players' Emergency Assistance Fund. His passing is a significant loss to the global hockey community. Number 8. Richard Baranchik, the last surviving member of the Monuments Men, a group responsible for preserving a vast amount of European artworks and cultural treasures looted by Nazi Germany during World War II, 
died on July 14th in Chicago at the age of 98. Brantic, who later became an architect, served as an army private first class in England and France until Germany's surrender. He volunteered for the monument's men and served for three months as a driver and guard. The monument's men, composed of about 350 people including museum directors, curators, scholars, historians and artists, worked to steer Allied bombers away from cultural targets in Europe, oversee repair when damage occurred, and locate and return millions of objects stolen by the Nazis to their respective institutions and countries. Despite the major role he played in this mission, Barantik did not feel like a hero, according to his daughter Jill Barantik. She recalled him saying, I was a kid, I was there for three months, it's wrong for me to take credit. However, she reminded him that he was a witness and represented those who were no longer with them. Barankik was one of the four members of the Monuments Men to receive the Congressional Gold Medal in 2015 in Washington for their heroic role in the preservation, protection, restitution of monuments, works of art, and artifacts of cultural importance. After the war, Barankik studied architecture in Europe and then returned to the US, graduating with a bachelor's degree in architecture in the late 1940s. He established an architectural firm in 1950 which designed private homes, office towers, suburban office complexes, bowling alleys, schools, and luxury apartment buildings. In addition to his architectural legacy and contributions to art preservation, Barankik leaves behind three daughters, two sons, four grandchildren, and three great-grandchildren. Number seven, James Zagel, esteemed judge and attorney, passed away at the age of 82 due to heart failure on July 15th at his home in Chicago. Born to Jewish immigrant parents in 1941, Zegel was a respected figure in the legal fraternity, known for presiding over numerous high-profile trials, including those of the Chicago outfit and former Illinois governor Rod Blagojevich. His career soared when he became a United States District Judge of the Northern District of Illinois in 1987, a position he held until 2016. Zegel, a Harvard Law School graduate, was deeply admired for his exemplary service in various capacities, including the state's attorney, assistant attorney general, and director of the Illinois State Police before his federal judicial appointment. He was a formidable presence in court, known for his firm but fair handling of significant cases, most notably the sentencing of Rod Blagojevich to 14 years in federal prison. Beyond the courtroom, Zegel was a Renaissance man with a wide variety of interests. He acted in two films and even penned a novel. A testament to his enduring commitment to law and justice, James Zegel's influence will continue to resonate in the annals of the American legal system. Number six, Sherry Pies, a trailblazing advocate for lesbian parents and a respected public health researcher, died at age 73 on July 4th. She succumbed to cancer at her home in Berkeley, California. Pies was instrumental in the gay boom of the 1980s and beyond through her influential 1985 book, Considering Parenthood, a workbook for lesbians. Starting as a health educator for Planned Parenthood, Pies began focusing on same-sex parenthood after her partner adopted a daughter in 1978. Pai's groundbreaking work included workshops and practical advice on parenthood for the LGBT community, filling a significant gap in available resources and support. Her book, published by Spinsters Inc., served as a beacon of guidance for countless lesbian couples considering parenthood and later sparked many more similar publications. In addition to her role as an advocate, Pai's later distinguished herself in academia. She was a renowned professor at the University of California, Berkeley School of Public Health. She studied the impact of racial and economic inequality on health, particularly infant mortality. Pies was instrumental in creating the Best Babies Zone Initiative, a program aimed at improving health conditions in economically disadvantaged neighborhoods across the country. Beyond her professional accomplishments, Pies was remembered by her wife, Melina Linder, as a woman whose impact reached far and wide. Her legacy continues to shape the lives of lesbian parents and their children, 
reflecting her enduring influence on the LGBTQ community and public health. Number five, Jamie Galarza Zavala, a revered Ecuadorian writer, journalist, and revolutionary, passed away at the age of 92 due to lung complications on July 21st. Known for his passion for justice and dreams of societal change, Galarza Zavala served as the country's first minister of the environment in 1996 under the government of Abdallah Bukaram. Born on July 28, 1930, in Cuenca, Ecuador, Galarza Zavala became a prominent figure in Ecuadorian cultural and political circles. His literary prowess and revolutionary spirit found expression in his more than 20 published books of poetry and nonfiction, including notable titles like El Yugo Feudal, El Festín del Petroleo, and Quienes Mataron a Roldos. His dedication to the leftist cause was a defining characteristic of his life, leading to his involvement in the Guayaquil student protest of 1959 and affiliation with the Communist Party. Galarza Zavala's contributions to culture earned him significant recognition, such as the National Eugenio Espejo Award in 2007 and the Vicente Rocafuerte Medal from the National Assembly of Ecuador in 2011. His passing was mourned by cultural institutions and fellow writers across the country, underscoring his significant influence on Ecuadorian literature and politics. Number four, Arnaud Beda, the renowned Swiss investigative journalist and reporter, passed away at the age of 58 on July 20th, following a battle with an undisclosed illness. Born on March 8, 1965 in Porrentruy, Beda made a name for himself as a fearless globetrotter and reporter. Beginning his career in journalism as a teenager, he spent his adult life delving into high-profile international cases, contributing to investigations such as the Order of the Solar Temple tragedies, the Swiss Air 111 crash, and corruption within the Ukrainian Football Federation. He also made a significant impact in the realm of Vatican affairs, closely following Pope Francis's pontificate since 2013, despite his self-professed atheism. A respected figure in the world of television, Beda appeared on various programs across Europe and beyond, including France's 13 H15 Le Dimanche and Canada's Tout Le Monde en Parler. His reporting earned him both recognition and controversy, leading to a court case in 2008 for disclosure of official secret documents, a charge he unsuccessfully fought in the European Court of Human Rights. His death was commemorated in Porrentruy's Saint-Pierre Church on July 24, marking the end of a remarkable career that left a profound impact on global journalism. Beda's dedication to unveiling truth and fostering international understanding will undoubtedly leave a lasting legacy. Number 3. Marcello Osler, legendary Italian cyclist, passed away on July 21 at the age of 77. Born in the Trentino region, Osler's illustrious career peaked in the golden years of professional cycling when he clinched a stage victory in the 1975 Giro d'Italia. Osler's life was punctuated by impressive feats on the saddle, including his triumph at the Giro, donning the iconic Brooklyn jersey. Osler survived a harrowing incident in 1970 when he fell into a coma after a crash during a downhill race. Yet he came back strong, finishing seven editions of the Giro d'Italia, won Tour de France in 1976, and even receiving a call for the World Championships. His personal life was similarly marked by resilience, after suffering a heart attack in 2013 during a bike ride with his son Ricardo, he spent the rest of his life in a wheelchair. His wife Elena Leonardelli shared updates on his health through the Marcello Osler Fan Club Facebook page, revealing the outpouring of love and support they received. After his retirement from racing, Osler continued to contribute to the sport, guiding younger cyclists and local teams. He remains an inspiring figure in the world of cycling, testament to his endurance and love for the sport. Messages of condolences on his fan page indicate the immense respect and affection he garnered throughout his life. His legacy will continue to inspire future generations in the cycling community. 
Now it's time to remember the legends who passed away in the past years. Number 2. Regis Philbin, a beloved television personality known for his long-running career in morning talk shows and as the host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, passed away at age 88 on July 24, 2020. He left a significant mark in the entertainment industry with a career spanning over six decades. Philbin is known for his warm and engaging personality and his ability to connect with audiences on a personal level. Philbin's television journey began by working various jobs at a Los Angeles TV station, eventually working his way up to on-air roles. His big break came when he began hosting The Regis Philbin Show in the early 1960s, which led to further television roles and his eventual stardom on Live with Regis and Kathy Lee and Live with Regis and Kelly. His hosting role on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire turned him into a national icon with his signature phrase, Is that your final answer? becoming a popular catchphrase. The show was immensely popular and lucrative, reportedly generating around $1 billion in revenue in its first two years and transforming Philbin into a millionaire many times over. Despite his successful career, Philbin remained humble and relatable, qualities that endeared him to his audience. Philbin leaves behind a rich legacy and will be remembered for his lively spirit, humor, and his unique ability to make each show feel like a casual conversation. His contributions to television history and his dedication to his craft will remain as a significant part of his legacy. Number 1. Nazim Richardson, an esteemed American boxing trainer from Philadelphia, passed away on July 24, 2020. He was renowned for his work with accomplished boxers like Bernard Hopkins and Sugar Shane Mosley, as well as Steve Cunningham and Carl Dargan. Richardson was raised in Philadelphia and began a tough life journey that included leaving home at the age of 14 and a period of incarceration during his teenage years. He found a path in boxing, a sport that, according to the New York Times, took him from the streets and gave him energy and purpose. In addition to his training, Richardson is also well known for his role in exposing Antonio Margarito's illegal plaster knuckle pads prior to a fight with Mosley. This discovery led to a one-year suspension for Margarito. Despite enduring a stroke in 2007 that temporarily hindered his ability to walk and speak, Richardson returned to the boxing world to continue his training career. His comeback led him to train Mosley for three of his most significant fights, including a win against Margarito and losses to Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Manny Pacquiao. Known as Brother Nazim, in acknowledgement of his devout Muslim faith, Richardson will be remembered not only for his dedication to the sport of boxing, but also for his integrity and resilience. His impact as a trainer and advisor touched the careers of numerous notable fighters and his legacy will continue to influence the world of boxing for years to come. You can continue watching these videos about recent celebrity deaths in June on your screen. To keep yourself updated, you can turn on notifications.